All right, good evening, full stack. I'm Chris Heller. Today I'm going to be talking about streaming in, or streams, <laughs> streams in Node, actually. Um, uh, <laughs> the reason I'm laughing is because I was going to say, when I say streams, you probably think of streaming right away. Um, and streaming is an implementation of streams, but I'm going to get a little bit more um, under the hood of what's going on when you're streaming stuff. Um, and streams actually have more applications than just you know, Netflix and HBO Go and Spotify. Um, so to start, what is a stream? A stream is simply a way to read and write data in pieces. These pieces are sometimes called chunks. Um, you've actually seen some examples before in what we've already done. Um, and a very big one is um, HTTP requests uh, and uh, responses. They're actually just streams. Um, and under the hood, these, the data that you receive and send is actually coming and going in chunks. Um, so take a look at an example. Um, right here, um, read file buffers the whole text into memory. We write it to the response stream, and then we signify that we're done with writing that response. Um, but as you can see here, I call it huge text. So you know, it's it's an enormous text. Um, but think about whether you know, think about if this was something other than text. If this was like a big video file or something, um, we probably wouldn't want to write it all to our memory before um, before sending it along to the response. So there's actually a better way to do that, and that's with, um, with another stream. Um, so changing the code around a little bit, you don't need to understand everything about this right now. Um, but basically, what we're going to do is create a stream with this fs create read stream. Um, and we are going to read the file as a stream in addition to writing it as a stream. So this has a few benefits. For one, it's less memory used on the server because you don't have to buffer the whole thing in before sending it off in the response. Also, um, on the client side, it means that you can start sending bits of data sooner to the client. So they're going to start uh, getting something rendered faster. Um, and in researching this, I found this really awesome um, little video thing. Um, it sort of demonstrates the process of fetching, processing, and rendering data without streaming versus with streaming. Um, and what you can see is um, one, what I just said, uh, some chunks get to be rendered way sooner um, because the rendering and the processing can, ha or the fetching and processing can happen um, in parallel at the same time. Um, you also, the, the thing that I found even cooler than that is that the whole thing gets rendered sooner. And you can see that because this giant chunk without streaming gets there later than the last little bit um, of the of the smaller bit. Um, I just think that's really cool um, because it means that there are a ton of applications. Uh, this just means even generally that web pages can load faster if you use streaming. Um, so at its simplest, streams, uh, the most important thing to know about streams is that you've got this internal queue or buffer um, or bucket, whatever you'd like to refer to it as, that is going to be controlling the flow between the source and the destination of the data. Um, so it's a really critical component. Um, and that's probably the biggest thing that makes streams different from like event emitters. Um, a lot of what streaming does you could do with event emitters, but being able to control the flow is huge. Um, so as I said, you can call this a bucket. Um, this is another good way to think of it. Um, though, <laughs> if the bucket gets full, water doesn't pour all over the place. It just waits for the bucket to have space again. Um, but I sort of like the water stuff going on with streams and buckets. And uh, they actually call the size of this bucket the high watermark. That's not something I created. Um, and you can specify that when you're creating a stream, if you're creating a sort of custom stream and you want to specify how big the buffer is going to be. Um, and it'll just be like the total number of bytes that, that it can hold. Um, so the communications in a stream all center around this buffer. Um, and streams are actually a type of event emitter. Um, so um, under the hood, you've got things going on like this, rec.onData. Um, when it receives a chunk, it's going to add it to you know, whatever we've declared as body. Um, but as I said, buffer is uh, what the important distinction is between. Um, so there are four different types of streams. We've got read streams, write streams, duplex streams, which are hybrids that they both read and write, um, and transform streams, which 
are often described as a type of duplex stream. Um, I, it was unclear to me at first what the difference really was, um, but I'll explain that a little bit in a minute. So with, starting with readable streams, readable streams are sort of an abstraction for the source. So um, you're going to be, the main thing is uh, whenever we call the read function, um, it, we're going to read the, some amount of data from the buffer. Um, so this could be called as fast as possible, um, but this can also be limited, um, which is why it's important to account for the differences in speed. So for example, um, say you are trying to stream a movie and you want to watch it 24 frames per second, but it's coming in at 200 frames per second. Well, you don't want all of that data coming in just backing up. That's just a waste of memory. Um, so streams help you receive the data uh, you know, just in time so that you're, you're not receiving so much more than you're going to be prepared to read. So a few good examples of uh, readable streams, as I said, um, HTTP requests uh, on the server side or HTTP re responses if you're on the client side. Um, and then this FS create read stream and uh, also process standard in the input um, to a program. Um, writable streams are pretty much the opposite. They are an abstraction for the destination. Um, all my examples are also pretty much the opposite. If you reverse, if you look at um, HTTP uh, from the other side. Um, yeah, so usually we're going to try to write the stream whenever we can, um, and it's up to the destination itself to deal with the data as fast as, it's, as, fast as it can. Um, duplex streams um, actually have two internal buffers. It's important to note that because um, they can handle reading and writing that might be of variable speeds, and you wouldn't want it to be a single, single transaction there because, again, you want to allow for better control flow. Um, so one good example of that is uh, network sockets. Um, use use uh, two separate internal buffers to do that. Um, transform streams, also, also known as through streams, um, are both read and write. And so it's sort of like, you can think of it as like two, um, two buffers in a row where there's going to be um, some kind of um, the transformation of the data between them. Um, so instead of returning to the initial source, like a normal duplex stream, um, you know, like a back and forth, a back and forth, it's going to take some data, do something with it, pass it on. So it's going to be able to read it from that initial source and then write it on to the next one. Um, so a few examples are encoding and decoding. Um, crypto library can do this. Uh, compressing and decompressing. Um, filtering data. So if you, if you were receiving you know, uh, a giant library of books and you wanted to like, output it as all caps, a transform stream, could like you could have a custom transform that turned it into caps on the way. Um, same thing, you could you receive JavaScript in a stream and turn it into JSON as you're receiving it. Um, so there's one more imp important component about streams that's really cool that I want to mention as well, which is that, um, and particularly in the case of transform streams, um, they can be chained onto one another. And uh, I've actually already showed you this uh, towards the beginning, but um, this pipe function um, is how we do that. So as a reminder, uh, source and destination are just stream A and stream B. Um, stream A can be readable or transform. Stream B can be writable or transform stream. So as you can imagine, we could have this huge chain of like that starts with a readable and then like five different transform streams and then goes on to uh, a writable before, you know, before being written. Um, is it, yeah, just uh, from the example at the very beginning, um, that is what we were doing there. But they could be chained. Um, you know, say, say this huge text file was actually a video, and with the video you wanted to be able to read it, decompress it, um, encode it, uh, timestamp it or something, and then send it over the internet. Um, that would involve a lot of different piping, which would be a ridiculous thing to manage um, given that those, those things all happen at different speeds um, without something like this piping function. So it's a really awesome resource, um, super powerful. Um, and I think streams are awesome, so I hope you do too. Um, here's some resources I used, and uh, there's plenty more out there, but it, it's still a young field, so we'll see where streams go.